Okay. Hey you guys, it's Heather here with My Life While Love. Thanks so much for joining me. And I'm actually at Considerate Joy Baking. You can see the cute little signs up here. And this is Elizabeth. Hey. Um, and Elizabeth is one of the owners at, or the owner. Uh, one of them. One of the owners mm -hmm. at Considerate Joy Baking. And so we're here to talk about meal planning and um, how to get your Whole30 and Paleo meals made as easy as possible each week. So I'm gonna let her introduce herself and tell a little bit about Considerate Joy Baking and how it got started. Do you want to hold it, actually, so it's a little easier? Sure. Okay, so um, we're actually coming up on our two-year anniversary this Thursday. But um, Consider Joy Baking, we started, um, like I said, two years ago. I was not paleo previous to about five years ago. One of my sons was sick, and we did a massive dietary change to um, help with his health. So that grew into me learning to cook this way, me learning to bake this way, um, wanting to make sure that uh, my kids just had the same kind of treats that everybody else did. Um, that led to me doing some Whole 30s and getting in more with the paleo community. So what started out here in our bakery two years ago was just a small bakery. Then I got a partner, added a cook. Um, now all of our meals are Whole 30. Uh, we do thank full service Thanksgiving, Christmas. Um, we have family dinners. So what started as a little bakery has grown a lot since then. Um, currently, we're in January. It's our busiest month of the year because so many people are doing Whole30s. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and having done them myself, I know how old it gets doing the food prep. So we have a place where you can come in, uh, grab a lunch. It's Whole30 approved. You can get family dinners. You can buy proteins by the pound just to help you out through the week. Um, I'm going to walk you over here to our cooler just so you can see if you stop in. And I'll actually hold it for you. Okay. So that way... Um, what you're doing. Yeah, Here we so go. if you were to just come in, you didn't have a pre-order place, but you were looking for something to grab, um, we have a big cooler over there, but since we're closed today, it's empty. We'll be restocking that soon. Uh, but in our freezer, we have different family meals. So we've got things like a sweet potato enchilada casserole, um, a shepherd's pie, an Italian bake. These are all Whole30 approved. All about four to six servings, and they're Which, all. I gotta tell you guys, my husband and I ordered that shepherd's pie, and Eric so is good. so excited it's about so it. Good. <laughs> it is like comfort food. Yes. Um, and then we also freeze some of our soups that we make each week. So we've got awesome. some chicken enchilada soups. Some and I had that last week, and it was really good. <clears throat> and then once you're done with Whole30, if you decide you're gonna transition to a more paleo lifestyle, we keep things in here like frozen waffles, um, frozen Which, what biscuits. are you making those with that makes it um, paleo? Almond flour and coconut flour. Okay, We good. bake using all almond and coconut flour, and we sweeten using honey, maple syrup, or dates. Oh, yum. Okay, so great. everything stays paleo compliant. We have this flatbread that a lot of people like to use for pizza crust. Oh, yum. It comes in a four-pack, um, biscuits, so... Basic, oh, cookie dough, chocolate oh, chip, yeah. cookie dough. So it's paleo chocolate it's chip. It's paleo things. chocolate. And then pecan shortbread, just slice and bake. Oh, nice. Yeah. And hey, Lauren, I saw you just joined a little while ago, and then it's, it's say hey. So everything here is paleo. We do um, grain-free granola made with nuts and seeds and coconut, and it's sweetened with honey, and that's probably one of our most famous uh, products. Is but, that because it was one of your son's favorite? Is that who got started doing that? It was always, well, I kind of baked out of my home a little bit before yes. I started, and yeah. it was just the biggest. I think the thing is, people can't really believe it's not oats, Yes. because the nuts and seeds and the coconut are crumbled up so well, yes. um, and it's just really hard to believe that, that there's no oats in it. Yeah. But um, I do want to tell you guys, since I, I mentioned that our two-year anniversary is coming up this week, actually Thursday. Happy anniversary, Thank by the you. way. <laughs> Cheerful juice. Um, <laughs> We have uh, an online menu every week that we put up that you can pre-order. So when our new menu goes up on Wednesday, since it will be our second anniversary, we're going to do 15% off all pre-orders for this awesome. next week. So you're going to want to like our Facebook page so you can see when we put up the new menu. It's Consider It Joy Baking. Or you can go to our website and sign up for our newsletter so that you'll get the email when the menu goes up. And yes. you can place your whole 30 meal orders for 15% off this week. Awesome. Is there a coupon code they need to use? or will um, it, just... it will be in the email that goes oh, out. Good. And we'll put it on our Facebook page. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, and when I found out for you guys, I'll, and I'm going to flip this back. 
Um, and when I find out the coupon code for you guys, I'll make sure and post it in my Life Well Loved um, Facebook group. So if you're seeing this video, you're on the My Life Will Love Facebook page, but there's also a group, um, and in there we like share recipes, and I've even shared some of my recipes from Consider It Joy Baking, or not recipes, but I've shared pictures of the food and what I'm eating. So um, yeah, if you guys need that information, I'll send it. Um, I'm going to sit back down over here. Um, she's got us like this cute little setup I'm going to show y'all with our little chairs in front of her little cute shop so that's kind of where we're sitting um, and the great thing about lives don't forget you guys is that you can ask questions so we're gonna talk about meal planning and kind of like what that looks like so if you have any questions about how to meal plan what we're eating what makes it work for us like what to eat on the go please shoot just comment on the bottom there and it'll pop up for us to see what you've asked so um, let's see first of all I'm gonna tell you what I am eating for my meals this week um, I ordered last night actually so the cutoff will you tell them about when to order online yes. and what the cutoff is so like I said we put up a new menu each Wednesday and that menu is for the following week so that menu stays up from Wednesday through Saturday for you to order for the next week um, so the cutoff is always the Saturday night at midnight prior to the week but like I said if you don't have an order you can still come in we always have grab-and-go options and just having looked at the menu, you'll usually know what kind of things you're going to find in store. And for instance, this week we're going to have chili. Uh, we're going to have meatloaf. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a smoky pork loin. And um, oh, your mom's on. Oh, hey, mom. <laughs> oh, hey, E. I see your girl on too. Um, and the so shepherd's pie. So sweet. <laughs> yes. So, and Eric loves shepherd's pie. So when I told him there was a whole thirty option for shepherd's pie, he was like, um, "Yes, please." So anyway, we're doing that. And then, so I don't think that I mentioned I live here in Birmingham, Alabama, and this is in her shop is in Bluff Park. So, but if they don't live here, you guys ship nationwide, right? We ship our granola and our bread and our coconut crunch nationwide. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Um, so if you live in Birmingham, though, you can definitely do some of the larger food orders. Um, but let's talk some about um, meal planning. So. With meal planning, some of you may know this, but when I first got married, I was completely overwhelmed with how to cook and what meal planning looked like. And we would go to the grocery store and I would literally buy those like bird's eye voila meals <laughs> and um, cook those and that was dinner. Or we would make hamburgers on the grill, just like really simple, easy things. And so I was like, okay, something's got to give. I've got to figure out how to not blow so much money on my grocery bill and then also you know, like how to eat more healthy and also be frugal. So, um, I actually got hired on to start writing meal plans at emails.com and I wrote the Publix for two meal plans. So I kind of wanted to talk with you guys about how to shop based on a grocery store circular and what that looks like. Um, but I obviously meal plan differently than other people do. And Elizabeth's going to kind of share a little bit about how she meal plans later on, but kind of just the basics of how I meal plan. And again, stop me if you have questions, like ask them, shoot them over. That's how we all learn. So um, what I do is I started out um, with actually going in the store and getting a physical copy of their store circular. And I would go through and circle everything that I thought that I could make a meal out of. So if hamburger meat was on sale, then I'd circle that. And if I saw that like whole wheat, whole wheat buns were on sale, then I'd circle that. Now, obviously with Whole30, you couldn't do that. But, <laughs> but maybe lettuce was on, on sale instead, then you could have a lettuce wrap burger. Um, so I would just go through and literally circle everything that was on sale, and that would be my grocery list. And I'd kind of figure out what to make a meal out of those things. Um, and I mean, to me, you just have to kind of pick out what works for you. So some people I know go to the grocery store. Hey, Tiffany, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I know that for some of you, you might go to the grocery store every Monday or every Saturday or whatever it is. I sit down every Sunday after church and make my grocery list and my meal plan, and I go to the grocery store on Sunday, and then I try to buy enough to last us through until Saturday unless we have some kind of, like, event or party with our friends where I know I'll have to go back and shop again. But that, in general, is how I would meal plan would be based on sales, um, and then, Elizabeth, is that kind of what you did, or did you do something different? I did. I tried to also make things that I called them kind of like rollover meals. So I would do, let's say, on Sunday night, I would roast two whole chickens. And then I would, we would eat the chicken for dinner with, along with vegetables. And then we would pull off all the chicken, and then I would save some of that to make a soup later and save some to do maybe barbecue chicken. That yes. way you're not cooking. Maybe the next night you just only have to make sides because you've already got the the uh, protein. So my big thing was just trying to always make at least one thing that night that could roll over into something else the next night. Yes. And some of my favorite examples, like, we do that too. And so some of my favorites would be um, like, 
I'm trying to think. We did, we'd do barbecue chicken in the crock pot, um, and we'd do a lot, like you said. And then we the next night, we do, like they, those of you that are familiar with Jim and Nick's, you know how they'll have their barbecue bakers where it's the baked potato or the sweet potato, and they stuff it with the, um, you know, like the chicken, cheese, and barbecue sauce and stuff. So we'll do that sometimes. What are some of your favorite rollover meals? I'm trying to think of just some different options. Um... I know that we've done in the past, like, if we do a marinara sauce with ground beef and then some zucchini noodles, then the next night you could stuff it in a portobello mushroom and make, like, a pizza. Oh, And maybe that's a good put idea. some, maybe not during Whole30, but pepperoni right. on top <laughs> and different veggies on top. So that's another one of my rollovers. Yes, I like that a lot. Um, and for us, like, we aren't real picky about leftovers, so my family's fine with that. I don't know how yours is. Um, but we will try to cook like three to four meals a week. Mm -hmm. And then, um, once we've done those, then we'll eat leftovers maybe the next night or do the rollover meals. Like what you said. Yeah. We're big on, on Thursday nights. It's like, we've got a lot of different leftovers from the yes. whole week. So I play restaurant with my kids <laughs> and I like list out the proteins and list out the vegetables and everybody kind of Hits to place thing. their order. Oh, that's fun. And then we make the, the dish of leftovers. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. Another way that I've heard that people meal plan too is they'll have like a theme. You know, so like on Monday night it might be like, oh, we know that this is Italian night. And on Tuesday night it's sandwich night. And on Wednesday night it's Chinese. So that way it's kind of like you know, mm -hmm. you know what different genre at least to get your brain thinking about what to make. Um, and I'm, then I'm trying to think also as far as just like saving money, I think it, once you get familiar with the grocery store, hey, Elizabeth, glad you're here. Uh, I literally met Elizabeth last night at dinner, so <laughs> hey, glad you're here. Um, but anyway, um, when we go shopping and try to save money, I used to use coupons when I wasn't eating as much like paleo and clean eating and Whole30, but sadly, they just don't have it that much on produce. <laughs> um, if you can go to um, Publix, they have a Publix baby club, which sends you tons of coupons on things even like dairy like that which is great because they'll send me like two dollars off any dairy item so when I buy Leighton his whole organic milk the baby um then he you know I'm saving money on milk which is awesome and then um and any of you that actually are on here and you meal plan I'd love to hear your tactics and what you do or questions about that because that kind of just helps you know kickstart different conversation or what have you um but let's see, then they also have coupons for like a dollar off any produce item. So the Publix Baby Club is a really great place. And then also I know Target has their cartwheel app that sometimes will have coupons yeah. off nuts and things that we can't eat on Whole30. Um, and then where else do you shop? I shop at Sprouts, Target, uh -huh. and Costco for the okay. most part. But yes. we use that cartwheel app a lot because they also have their Applegate Farms meat yes. is on there a lot. And... Um, just their up and up store brand. Whatever yes. you buy that's in the store brand. Like I'll get my son's raisins or um, dried chocolate covered banana chips or something yes. like that for their lunch boxes. I totally. love the cartwheel app. Yes. And I think that the big thing to think about, it, do you mind holding this yeah. for a second? My arm's like going numb, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just saying how I wish that Facebook Live would allow you to use a computer so that your hands could be free. <laughs> or I need like a selfie stick or something. <laughs> anyway. Um, so what were we just talking about? I, mom brain, you guys. It's real. <laughs> um, let's see the here. Sales the oh, the stores. sales. Yes, that's right. Okay, so a lot of times, you know, like I shop at Aldi a lot too and I actually found out that they have their bacon it's $5.99 and it's uncured sugar free mm -hmm. which is so hard to find and I'll shop sometimes at Sprouts because they have great produce sales I know that in my Facebook group some of you guys were talking about we were so excited at the RX bars which are a great convenience food to eat on the go um, they were on sale for 88 cents a piece at Sprouts which is insane it's such a good deal um, and then while we're kind of talking through, you know, just like what you get at the grocery, I was thinking that, you know, a lot of times when you buy things based on what's on sale, it's so nice because then you're also getting different fruits and veggies in your diet that you wouldn't necessarily always, you know, like for me, if it were up to me and I didn't base it on sales, I'd be like, okay, well I buy broccoli and green beans every week and that's what we have. <laughs> but then I'm not getting enough different vitamins and minerals and experimenting with new fruits and vegetables, which I think is really important for my son to learn that we need to do. Um, what are some of your favorite ways to either do veggies or like different veggies to try? Um, well, my kids are a little bit older now. Yes. So they are nine and 10. So sometimes when they're with me at the store, I'll say, I need you to pick two vegetables each for this week. Oh, that's that good. way they're getting something that they like. It's not, mm -hmm. they feel like they had some say in what we're having. Um, when they were younger, 
we would I would always do the let them choose. Sometimes we would do like we have to have so many of this color and so many of oh, another that's good. color. Yes. Um, things like that. But yeah, yes. we do try and shop seasonally. I actually my family won't eat eggplant, but I like it. But it was like fifty cents at Sprouts the other day. So I was like, Okay, Gosh, well I'm insane. just gonna eat it for lunch uh, yeah. myself. So <laughs> totally. We're eating eggplant. <laughs> yes, totally. Um, what are y'all stock up things that you get for produce and because I always love hearing different things and how people like to do their veggies. For me, I love roasted vegetables. I think that's so good. Um I was actually just telling Elizabeth that my husband didn't think Hey, Elena. My husband didn't think that he liked cauliflower, but we tried their buffalo cauliflower mm -hmm. that they had here. We ordered it last week, and he was like, I could do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about, like, trying veggies in different ways. Will you kind of talk with them some about how y'all prepare that cauliflower? Yeah, yeah. So it's basically just roasted. She roasts the cauliflower. I, I do all the baking here, and my partner does all the cooking. But um, she roasts the cauliflower and then pulls it out just before it's done and tosses it in our buffalo sauce that we also use when we make buffalo chicken and then puts it back in for the last few minutes. Um, but it's just so savory and mm -hmm. delicious. Um, I will say for cauliflower at my house, my one son likes it roasted and then my other son and my husband only like it made into cauliflower rice. Oh, so it's like, I can't win. I can't win with any of them. Talk with them about how you make cauliflower rice. And I'll hold it for okay. a minute so you get a break. Um, so basically, I just buy a head of cauliflower and then cut all the florets off and put it in the food processor on the grater attachment. Um, I guess you could also hand grate it if you wanted to. With like the cheese graters yeah. or something? Yeah. 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 Okay. And then so it's just kind of like ricey and diced. Although I'm starting to see it now at Sprouts already done. And mm -hmm. I've heard that Trader Joe's Trader has Joe's it already does done. It, yes. Um, so if you don't have a food processor, that might be a good way to go. And yes. then I literally just stir fry it. I'm, we always do it into fried rice usually. Yes. Um, but I always stir fry it in coconut oil. Um, some people roast it on a pan, but I just stir fry it and it's delicious. Well, we've, we've even done like a dirty rice okay. where we make a homemade sausage. Yes. And then just cook the cauliflower in that grease after the sausage Ooh, is cooked yes. and added like peppers and celery and onions and spices and stuff like that's really good that does sound really good um and while you guys are on here will y'all tell us some of your favorite like paleo or whole 30 meals i always think it's so nice to get to share the, those um and i know that we talk about this every week but you guys literally are either snapchatting or instagram storying or tagging me in your instagram showing me that you're making my whole 30 and paleo white chicken chili soup. And y'all, that soup, if you haven't tried it, it is so good. And it makes so much. I'll have to share the rest yeah. with you. Um, but anyway, it makes a ton. And so we always freeze half so that we can have it later on. And it is, like, a really good flavor. It has sweet potatoes in it and then chicken. And you make your own stock off of, like, a rotisserie chicken. So it's already cooked and nice and easy for you. Um, and so I would say that that is a lot of how I get away with meal planning and only doing three or four meals a week because I do make big batch recipes. Um, what are, those of you that said that you wanted to do um, Whole30 meal planning, are there any specific questions that you want to talk about or ideas? Because I know we talked some about how you can either order your meals. And I know you all tr know that I tried the Nourish Meals a couple weeks ago. And then this past week I started trying these from Considerate Joy Baking. And then you also can use meal planning services if you don't have time to do it yourself. Um, like I know you could use the emails paleo plan and there's other meal planning services available. Do any of y'all use meal planning services or do you do it yourself or are you just like, no, I don't meal plan at all. And so that's why I need help. Um, I'd love for you to comment and let me know. Um, but then other than that, I mean, meal planning just really can be more of a mental game. I think in the beginning it sounds overwhelming, like, oh, how do I get started and how do I do this? But, um, once you get into it, it really it's actually kind of fun. I know that sounds weird, but once you sit down, you're like, okay, well, I have my routine and I have my pretty little Erin Condren planner that I like to get out and write down. And so it makes me feel organized and like ready to go for the week. Um, and I've even started adding to my husband and I's group calendar on our, um, on our iPhones. You know how you can sync your calendars together? We started really to use that more. And so one thing that I want to do is start putting in our meals on those days so that Eric kind of knows what to expect. And that way if he thinks like, oh, the white chicken chili doesn't sound that great to me tonight, he can tell me the day before and then we can plan to swap out meals so it's not like he gets home. Don't you hate that when your husband gets home and it's like, oh, hamburgers don't sound good to me tonight. And I'm like, well, great, because everything else is in the freezer, so you're having a hamburger. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, let's see, what did Sue say? She said, since I live alone, vegetables tended to go before I could use them. I found those green bags really do help them stay fresh longer. Oh, what are the green bags? Do you know about those? Um, yeah, I've, I've not used them myself, but you can buy them. Um, they usually sell them at all the grocery stores in the produce section. They're supposed okay. to keep your produce fresher longer. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, and one thing, you guys, so last week we talked some about um, how to make your produce stay fresher for longer with the berries. And I know some of you talked about using vinegar and water mixture to wash it. Do you do that? Have no, you I only okay. wash them right before I eat them because yeah. I know they go bad faster if you wash right. them all at once. Right. Okay, so I didn't think that it tasted funny when we did the vinegar and water, but Eric said that he could taste it and he felt like it made the berries mushier. And y'all said you didn't have a problem with that, so maybe I put in too much vinegar. So if you do do that, please leave a comment and let us know what your ratio is because I'm curious to know if I just messed it up <laughs> or if, like, Eric just has hypersensitive taste buds, which also could be the case because he's one of those who's, like, knows he can pick up anything. So, um, anyway, I, I do want to kind of tell you a little bit about, I'm working, I was supposed to have a blog post up this morning on mylifeoflove.com with my Whole30 recap of last week, and I, we hosted a brunt, neighborhood brunch yesterday and went out to dinner to celebrate a friend's birthday party, and so, long story short, I was up working on it until 1 a.m. last night, and then it just didn't happen. So, um, when I get home, I'm going to finish that blog post, and I'll be detailing everything that I ate for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, so you guys continue to get good ideas. Um, one thing I did want to run by you guys, and I know there's not a ton of you watching it live right now, but I know you'll be watching it afterwards too. So I actually had a friend of mine, Jamie, that's in my group. Hey, Caroline, glad you're here. Um, one of my friends in um, the group actually suggested that we do something that her Whole30 group did before, which was go out and do like a celebratory tequila tasting. Have you done that before? No. Isn't that so fun? <laughs> I thought it was a really fun idea. Um, so apparently, I didn't know this until she told me that tequila, if it's agave based, is actually one of the more, I guess, like paleo drinks yeah. that you can have. Which I was like, well, that's great because I love myself a margarita. And I try to do them simple so they aren't, you know, with all the added laugh stuff in it. Um, but anyway, so if you guys are local to Birmingham and you're interested in doing a tequila tasting, will you let me know in the comments below? And if you have any suggestions about places to go and do it, let me know. Um, and then, yeah, I think that would be a really fun meetup for our Birmingham people. Let's see, Tiffany said, the last two weeks we have made chicken fiesta bowls, just one chicken breast, black beans, chickpeas, red onion, tomatoes, peppers, and salsa with rice cauliflower, mm -hmm. like we were talking about, um, salt, pepper, cumin, and cilantro, and then I'm going to have to click to see more. It says, the first night the chicken and rice are warm. For all the leftovers, it's cold right out of the fridge. It's very good. Ooh, that, that does sound good. very good. So listen, I'm going to have to copy and paste that and put it in our Facebook group so I can add that to their meal plans because that sounds nice and easy and good. And then Caroline said, I'll have to watch the full video later when I'm off work. Oh, okay. I understand. <laughs> I love that you popped in, though, to say, hey, that's awesome, Caroline. Um, let's see. Do you want to show them a tour while we've got sure. you of maybe, like, the kitchen and stuff? Um, so you guys can see what's going on. And if you do want to take advantage of the meals, you'll see the kitchen and everything yeah. that we had going on. So, so show us around. <laughs> this is our kitchen. Um... Got All those fridges, those fridges wow. Well, when we opened, since like I said, we were just like a really small bakery at first, the kitchen like basically ended here. Like everything really? I owned was like from here up. Oh my gosh, wow. So we've grown a lot. And Look at all those spices, lot. you guys. Yeah, this is Rebecca's side, so this is where she does the cooking and does the meals. Um... Look at all those. I'm like, what do I need to add to my um, lineup at home? This is awesome. <laughs> Cool. So this is the cooking this space, is the cooking and side. your baking space must be over here. And this is the baking side, and then we just kind of share the table in the middle. Although, as if Rebecca was asked, she would tell you I hog all the space. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at the size of this mixer. Or I know. Or well, let me just tell you when I opened uh, for the first probably six months, I made everything in this. Oh I mean, my god! We're talking about starting from oh wow, like nothing in this bakery, and when this came. I couldn't even, like, comprehend this. <laughs> so, you thought you died and gone to heaven. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think compared to most bakeries, this is still a pretty small batch, but for me, sure. it's big. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, How many orders of that granola would you say that you make a week? Well, now that we've got... I, I really probably only have to make it 
every few weeks now. Okay, that's good. Because I can do like 90 bags at a time. Oh, wow. Um, but in the summer, we have uh, a farm, a uh, local farm takes our granola to their CSA. Yeah. And sells it at the different hospitals. Oh, and cool. so they get at least 20 bags a week. Oh, dang. Yeah. I'm kind of showing them all your <laughs> yeah, ingredients while totally. you're talking to. Look at all this stuff. You might recognize stuff. some of them. We get some of them at Costco. Oh, I'm sure. It's hard to get bulk. <gasps> I didn't know that they had almond oh, butter at Costco. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you not remember the price on that? I think it's seven or nine ninety nine. Y'all, it's that's low. an incredible deal for that size almond it's butter. Low. That's insane. Okay, I need to go there and stock up on that. Do you get coconut milk there too, or no? This no, doesn't look like Costco. No. Okay, we order that, but. It's so funny because we order it, but it turns out it has no additives. So oh, that's great. It's better than anything that you can get at the store. Um, tell them what about coconut sugar because I've just started experimenting with that semi-recently. And I know you can't do it on Whole30, but no, afterwards you can when you're you can, transitioning. You can do it afterwards. It's a lot like brown sugar. Okay. Um, and a lot of recipes I see show that you can sub it one-to-one -one with white sugar or brown sugar. Yes. Okay. Um, those strawberries I use for our frosting, our strawberry frosting. Oh, yum. Because we also don't do any artificial colors or artificial flavors or anything like oh, that. Oh, good. That's awesome. You guys, look at all this face back here that she didn't have before. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? The big sinks. <laughs> Way cool. Yeah, okay, so awesome. we have basically filled this kitchen up. I don't know that we could grow anymore. <laughs> we had to. Yes, that's awesome, we though. We use every inch of it as much as Okay, you guys, well, I think that we're probably going to wrap this up unless y'all have any other questions about meal planning or ordering um, from Considerate Joy Baking. I'll get kind of closer to you so they can oh, see I both of us. Oh, I did want to say, oh, we yeah. do, um, when you're ordering online, which like I said, our anniversary is on the 19th, our new menu is going to go up on the 18th, and there will be a 15% off order code. If you want to do delivery, we deliver around the Birmingham area, um, basically from about downtown to Alabaster, and it's $12. And those deliveries go out on Tuesday. But you have to place your order online. And when you're doing that, just you'll have to enter your address. And at the end of placing your order, you can choose either pick up in store, which is a free option. And you just say which day or delivery. And that always happens on Tuesdays. So just want you to know we have a lot of people who have it sent to their work. Um, we have one workplace now where three people are ordering. Oh, cool. So they're ha And they're, they just keep it there and do their lunches. All week. Oh, that's so, awesome. That's really smart. Um, it's something to think about. Yes. Um, so if y'all have questions um, for me or for Elizabeth, if you leave them in the comments and it's not for me, I can get the questions okay. over to Elizabeth. Um, and then once she has the discount code up to get 15% off starting on what day? Wednesday. On Wednesday this week. Then I'll get that to you guys too in case you want to try it. Um, Eric and I are getting their paleo chili, their shepherd's pie, and their um, Whole30 approved um, chicken salad this week, which, I mean, I love chicken salad, so I'm really <laughs> excited about that. I've missed it. Um, so anyway, and then let me know what you think about the tequila idea. If so, and you're local, then let me know if you have any restaurants that you'd recommend that we go to, because um, I think that'd be so fun to meet some of you guys in person that I hadn't met yet, and y'all know I love some people and I love chatting, so <laughs> I'm all about that idea. Um, if you go to mylifeolive.com later this afternoon, I'll have up that blog post for you guys, I promise. And then I'm also going to put the link to anything that we talked about in this um, in the comments and at the top after this video is over. Hope you'll have a wonderful Sunday. And bye. bye. We're going to sign off for now. See you all later. <laughs>